CT has a lot of great personalities, yeah. and I really love that about it, to be honest with you. I like the fact that we have them all on here. <laughs> like, we gotta have like the best of the best from ct because the best of the best have to align with the best of the best mm -hmm. period okay now tell me about not um about oh yeah oh, yeah. oh i'll tell you uh, let me tell you my part i have myself too much what and i was going to stay there all night I wanted you to. I know. I wanted to too, and that was. You know the, what the funny thing is? That forty-five minutes the after he left, it was done. He only had to stay for like forty-five more minutes. Right. I I know I would. I know, but I would have stayed there, and I know. I have to map my responsibilities. You're acting like old man. Yeah, I, I am. <laughs> the one night we You're go not. out together and everything, this thing oh left. Oh my god! Like literally, we on the stage, we're just chilling. This thing it just daps me up and dip. Where was the party at? Uh, it was Rum Punch. Oh, Run Punch Thursday. Oh, 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 yeah, okay. so it was at Run Punch Thursday. So you know Run Punch is lit. Why I had, invite me? I got a random invite randomly. I, had, I didn't want to go. <laughs> me <laughs> either. Go. He texted me. It was yeah. like, yo, Nash at Papa. I was like, you know what? Fuck it. It's Nash's birthday. We're going to do that. Okay. And yeah, I did. So my thing is, honestly, my ears are still ringing. Oh, my. Yo. Oh, yeah. I was like right by the speaker. Yeah. Said, yeah my ears shit. are still ringing. Yeah. That was two days ago. <laughs> when I was, when I went outside... <laughs> The weird change in the sound thing, it fucked my shit up. I was like, yo, what the fuck it is like this? It was like shell shock. Yeah. Yo. <laughs> I got uh, another high. Really? Because my ears was, was that. Yeah, up. that shit's probably fucking It was weird. Yeah, I can't, it reminded me when I was in Jamaica and I was standing, because you know, the music in Jamaica is way louder. Yeah. So you even if big you, ass sound yes. systems. Yeah. So I remember I, the last time I did that in Jamaica, I couldn't hear for four days. You my know, ears was ringing for four days that's straight. Not funny. Yo, that was torturous, yo. But I, I had fun with my brother. I'm really glad. Just because I... Like, you know when you're around somebody that you love, regardless, and they, you know that love is there back, mm -hmm. too. So it was nice bringing in, like, his 30, 30th birthday with him. Like, oh, God. Nice turn 30. Yeah. So it was really good. Like, I had to be there for that. We like, that's one of the reasons I went out, because I had to be there. Because Naj is one of those friends where even if you go, like, a week without talking, that's rare. Yeah. It's rare. Yeah. Like... Naj literally just FaceTimes me and call me just to see how I'm doing, just to oh. check in on me. How's your mental? How you doing? Like, he's yeah. one of the first... Naj is probably the only person who knows secrets about me that nobody knows. Like, that's nobody knows. Yeah. Like, that's my closest friend, like, to this end. I, I, I know I have other close friends, but that's been my brother. His mom helped raise me. Like, his mom is my mom. Like, literally. So, yeah. like, that's all my brother to the end. So, Naj... Happy belated birthday. I'm really glad I was able to bring your 30th with you, bro. And honestly, you're a fucking celebrity, my nigga. Because everybody that I seen came up to you and talked to you. I'm like, this nigga is and at the, known and as And that 12 o'clock on the dot. Everybody. That was the weirdest up, part. I was yes. like, yo, what the fuck? I didn't even know it was his birthday until I saw people coming up there. Oh, <laughs> and shit. I'm standing next to him the yeah. whole time. <laughs> I love you, bro. Keep doing what you're doing, man. I had a lit, safe night, though. I had a great so, night. Yeah. It's funny because... He pointed it out to me, but apparently my ex baby father was there, and I, I don't know. I guess it was just a weird situation with that, cause I think the nigga think Naj was dating her at one point with some weird shit. So he be he be giving funny energy, but other than that, yo, we had a great vibe on some real shit. That's good. I had a great ass fucking time. So y'all niggas be safe and be great. For real, Rum Punch been doing their thing though. Yo, Rum Punch they is lit. Their thing. Shout yeah. out to Echo, Rum Punch that's is lit. For real, yeah. And it's been like no drama, no At fights, all. no shooting, Regardless of no where anything. He had it. Exactly. And no matter how much people come there, because he had one bad. outside, he had a free one. And you know, free shit get lit, Ayo, lit up. Also, yeah, people don't know how to act when it's <laughs> free. <laughs> also, shout out to Tropics, right? Mm. True. Coast, 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 coast. All my niggas, we coast High grade, we smoking on the highway, we well, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, I can welcome. tell y'all this. I feel really drunk right now. I, <laughs> drink that much. I need to get on his level, so I want to pour. Don't. Me on the shit. All right, let's 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 get into the shits then, because I, I it, it's no better than to get into the shits. This I brought a few. Right here. Right, nah, cool. I'm about to roll up. I'm, oh, you can finish rolling this. There you go. Make yourself useful, drunk boy. <laughs> <laughs> I will definitely do that. Give me some papers. Shit. <laughs> Here you go, grab it right there too. Yep, yeah, all that. <laughs> Use my supplies and roll my weed. Yes. No, this, this our weed right now, nigga. I'm about to. <laughs> <laughs> this is why you need the type of friends. It goes back to the saying: Who need enemies when you have the friends you have? <laughs> so roll my weed. Nope. We both look at this, nigga. That's some real shit. All right, so let's lead off with this real quick. So, 
Drake just dropped a new album. Mm. Who knew about it? I found out about it yesterday. Okay. Yesterday? I saw everyone listening to it. Yeah. I will say, right? I will say leading up to the drop, I didn't know when he was dropping it. But I knew he had some type of promotion coming up to True. Like, because I during the, the album drawing. tour, the tours and the, yeah. draw, the drawing. But that's the, the Drake drawing. for you, you know? Drake yeah. always have his own marketing schemes going on. And it's very, very indirect. And come to find out, that whole shit with Charlemagne was something that was planned. Oh, really? That yeah. makes fucking sense. You want to know, I started looking at Drake different. You know what made me start looking at him different? How I heard he handled that podcaster, Bobby, the white girl. Oh, mm-hmm. How I learned he handled her episode, I knew Drake market differently. She didn't have no say in that episode. Drake literally took everything. His whole team handled that episode. Oh, really? His whole team handled that episode. That's why he had the freedom to take that shit the fuck down. I didn't watch it, but I did see a clip of it. And yeah. they were like in the bed and shit. And I'm yeah. Like, the fuck are they in the bed? But Drake literally <laughs> controls everything that he has his face on or his name on. He mm. His so, team takes full control of that shit. So and now, I love that. So now, right, saying that uh, Joe Budden recently commented on his album and said that he is a little bit too old to be rapping like a young guy. He's about to be 37 or 38, one of those two. And he's a little bit too old to be that. And he needs to grow up. And he's stealing the game from the young guys. <laughs> How do you feel about that? I think that we shouldn't listen to a one hit wonder. Oh, <laughs> yes. Oh, fuck, yes. Ooh. I think it's just a one hit wonder. I'm, sorry, I don't, I'm not the biggest Joe Budden fan. Me I'm really neither. Not. And Me neither. His song, his that one <laughs> song just went platinum like. Pump, fucking yesterday. God, like, it just and that's, gold. Oh, this, oh, was it gold? Like, know. yesterday. Like, it's been out for how fucking long? Like, 20 years? And it took 20 years for us to... So, you got served. That Shots was that. fired. Like, I don't think we should fucking listen to you. Yo, listen. I... Listen. Shout out to what you did in the podcast world, but everything else, bro. Very true. It's he not, did say something it's not when much. I was watching the clip that really stood out to me, though. He was like, yo... The things that you think you're going to be great in is not the thing that you're going to be fucking great in. Of course he would say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yo, that... Yo, touch me. Yo, touch me. Touch me. Yo, touch me. Touch me. Touch me. Touch me. Yo, yes. Yes, let's go. I have no fucking words for this shit. Let's go. All right, so like, let's get back to Drake real quick, right? So, in the midst of Drake dropping this album, he just says... He needs a mental break, mental health break now. <laughs> you know why? You know why? Why'd you laugh? No, okay, okay. You know why he needs a mental health break? Because he disses, he ruffles everyone's feathers with his albums. And then, he, it's and then really. he's just like, exactly, like every time. <laughs> okay, so I heard, so, so this is a theory behind that, right? Maybe Drake's trying to capture the same type of essence now we know Drake as being the guy that releases hits all the time. Mm-hmm. Right? Is it hits or but the Drake fans no, just no, force no, it upon let's us? Say, let's say this: He stays on the charts. He okay. does. Okay. We know okay. Drake is known somebody that it stays on the charts, releases albums all the time. They go crazy, whatever. Maybe he's trying to capture the same essence as a J Cole and a Kendrick, where they're now instead of instead of just being that guy who stays with the times. He elevates himself. Like, so you see Kendrick, every time he releases an album, it's a new elevation of him. I don't think Drake elevated. But that's what I'm saying. Because I was going to ask the question, but that's did he what actually I'm say- age in these last couple years? But that's what I'm I saying. Think he's very diverse. Like, one minute he'll have, like, a Forever 21 kind of album. Then he'll have, like, a, a British drill kind of song I wouldn't call him whatever. diverse. I just feel like he's, he's little, just he's the Drake a version diverse. of Fabulous. Because like, remember, Fab at a point only came out with sounds that was resembling sounds that was popular with all his albums that he, and projects he was dropping. But and you know, he had all the hottest artists featured on him. I feel know, like Drake is doing that. But you know I think that's different? Because Fab was just hopping all the people's beats too. Yeah, no, nah, but Drake just do it the most light-skinned way that you possibly can <laughs> fucking do it. That's the difference. <laughs> What? Light skins like to add a little pizzazz to the things that pizzazz. they do just to make it feel like I'm better than you. <laughs> I feel like he's I feel like Drake is a little diverse. I still won't use the word diverse. I don't know. Diverse. He switches up his accents. He can hop on any He uses accents kind of like genre. Popular. 
true. So it's not really he switches it up. He's but hopping I mean, on popularity, which is why I think he signed PopCon. He really appreciates Jamaican culture. Appreciate or appropriate? No. <laughs> Both of them. <laughs> but I don't think... You know why? That's one argument I don't think is fair. Because why? he is from Toronto. Okay. Yes, and that's how they talk there. It's like, it'd is be it? like, it'd yeah. be, why? Have you ever heard? Because why? It's, it's, it's because like, a lot of Jamaicans went there, very, right? Yes, yeah, a very like heavily So just because Jamaicans Jamaican... went there means that everybody can just hop onto that culture now? But no, but that's, that's how but, it is there. Like, but that'll be like, that'll be like somebody from Hartford, regardless of what color they are, not knowing Jamaicans To all. be honest with you, for, as somebody who went to Toronto, that is not how they talk there. I certain boroughs, a lot of, certain boroughs talk, speak like that. Even like in the UK, that's a better example. That's a better because these niggas actually use shit like wagwan and yeah. things like they don't speak like that in Toronto and like on a general population. But I think that's what Toronto tries to be. It's more it, like tro- it's not keyword. It's tries. not. It's not Jamaican. It's the British thing. Let me ask you this: because they have more authentic. Jamaican Who put or- Toronto onto the map? Let me Drake. hear all the wrong answers. Drake. Nope. You're I wrong. Would say, I would You're wrong. Say, Drake. I would say You're Drake. wrong. You're fucking wrong. Who? You're wrong. Who? Vince Carter. Who the fuck is that? Who all right, the fuck all right, is Vince all right, Carter? All right, all right, all right, <laughs> Who is all right, that? All right, wait. Whoa. All right. <laughs> Who is that? All right. All right. See, I didn't. I'm not going to agree with that, but you're bugging. First of all, we're gonna address that first, but we're gonna address this. Yes, Can Google it. Google, Google him. Vince Carter, my nigga. The my name man put his the... arm through the hoop like this. He put his arm. Oh, in that's one of the first player? famous black people to make Toronto popular. He made rappers want to go to Toronto. That's the main argument of why he made Toronto popular. No rapper, no celebrity wanted to go to Toronto until Vince Carter went to Toronto. Okay, see, I don't keep up with sports. I know, but this, so, I know, but he's the reason so, why so, Toronto is popular. He's the reason why mm, black people go to fucking Toronto. Mm, Vince Car- If you actually look at the Vincent, if you watch the Vincent the documentary, say, watch would, the documentary. I would say Vince Carter was more of putting Toronto on the map as more as basketball. No, because nobody wants to go to cold ass Toronto until Vince Carter. You want in a basketball? Let market. me prove that point. Let me. Yes, even still, let me prove this point, nigga. Even in the basketball world, Vince Carter attract one of the biggest stars at that time when he went to Toronto to come to Toronto. One of the biggest stars. Tracy McGrady was one of the biggest NBA players at that time when he went there. And when he went there, he was able to bring Tracy McGrady to Toronto because of how much he was putting it onto the map. And after that, all these rappers wanted to start going there. They started having bottle services in there. Now everybody started having business curated around having celebrities actually come into Toronto. And that is a fact. But Drake, but see, that is a fact. Yes, but, it don't matter. Yes, you can talk about Drake, but we have to talk about what Vince did before Drake came. That's like saying Bob Marley's not one of the best Jamaican artists out there, but before saying Vibes Cartel is. You can't give Vibes Cartel the best without acknowledging the best before I could him. Never, but I could never say Vibes Cartel put Jamaica on the map. He didn't. Of course not. Bob Marley did. But that, Exactly. But My point. I could say that about Drake. He didn't put them I on never the map. Yeah. Because I... She not, she don't know I sports, never, yeah. but I that never doesn't mean they were on the map. That's like saying that's like me basically saying the same thing in reverse. I didn't know shit about Drake until other people started talking about him. He didn't. No, you can't. You kind of just can't escape Drake. He's at like this point everywhere. now, Drake didn't put him on. Drake didn't put Toronto on the map when he's in Degrassi. No, but after. That was but Vince Carter, Carter was, was just... still being popping in uh, Toronto at that time. He still had a name in Toronto at that time. So when Drake was still building his name. Vince but Carter sports, was already putting it on. But okay, so but it's sports. You're limited into sports. But it's now sports. We talk, black people real, follow black people. It's sports, Am I wrong with that? But it's sports You're not real wrong culture. With that, but sport culture is culture. Sports and the rap culture go hand in hand. If you want to make that argument, if you want to go make that argument. But from if you want to make that argument, how many rappers right? try? How many basketball players try to rap? A lot. My point. So you can't say. Just because it's sports, it it, it just automatically means they I don't need to know that. about it. Huh? What can we name some basketball rappers? <laughs> Damian Lillard. Oh, Damian Lillard. Sha- Shaquille O'Neal. Uh, <laughs> I thought Sha- that was like just Sha- joking, no, joking things. Rappers. They were serious. Kobe, ra- Kobe dropped the whole album. Yeah. What the fuck? Shumper. <laughs> Shumper's a rapper. Yes. 
What? These are niggas who yeah. goes in the studio and rap with pro- like celebrity producers and everything. Yeah, no, for a fact. These I'm niggas like the have only, studios in their and they're homes. nice. Some of them nice. Yes. I'm like the only, like, like, the only athlete that I I saw like trying to do music was like um, AB. Is that his name? Adrian Broner? Yes. No, the boxer. Yes. Oh, no. no. Yeah. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, you talking about, you talking about, um... Why his name just escaped me? You talking about the football player, the wide receiver from? Uh, oh, oh yes, 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 yes. Adrian Brown, or something like that. Something Brown, yeah, Brown. yes, I, him. Why the fuck don't I remember his name? I know, I know that shit, but yeah, Antonio Brown. Yes. Yeah, uh, but that's that that nah, that's a little CTE, so that's not that's not the same oh. thing. Ooh, it, yeah, <laughs> come on now. <laughs> Yeah, it ain't something right now about that boy. Yes. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I, I don't exactly. disagree with that. But... <laughs> Do you know football enough? So niggas get hit in the head a lot. Yeah. Hard. I mean, I watched the Aaron Hernandez. All right. Oh, yeah. oh. Yeah. So do you believe men have beards? If you watch it, you know what the reference is. A beard is when a man is gay, but they don't want the public to know that they're gay. So they date a woman to give off that they're straight. And the woman is the beard. Oh wow! Um. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I learned that in the Hernandez documentary. Okay, maybe I gotta rewatch it. Yeah, I he had a whole beard. Oh, you ain't know that. They, oh, I did hear the gay they, allegations yes, in there. Yes, that's what they called it—a beard. That's yeah, the I term. Do absolutely believe in that. Yes. yes. That, what do they call it? It's just normally called like, isn't it just a cover up? Or some shit. But now yeah. they've redefined it as beard. Okay. Yeah. Because a lot of niggas that. use that's their the, beards to cover up the, the imperfections word. in their face. Yeah. That's the cold word. Wow. Yeah. That's the cold word. Yeah, I gotta rewatch that. I that learned was that shit. crazy though. That was a crazy documentary. It be the most dieselest niggas, yo. It do. <laughs> I see them in the gym and shit too, and like I'm like I learned the perfect word for them. Somebody gave them the perfect word. What? what? Greedy. Greedy? Yes. How is they, it? Ask me why. I just both. did. Because they can get both. You're telling me a nigga, you're telling me you got looks, you got muscle, you got all the physical characteristics to attract a girl without doing nothing, but yet you still want to fuck Bati. You're greedy. It's like them homo thugs. Homo thugs. All right, we're going to take a shot to that one right there. Yes. That's greed, bro. That's greed. Save the pum pum for niggas who actually want pum pum strictly. It's not that easy. Or take my advice. Have kids at eighteen, get married, <laughs> stop fucking around. Like they not just, gonna do that. People don't. People get married and they still fuck around. Stop doing that. <laughs> <laughs> just simple I mean, as that. Not like just you, don't do it. Stop doing just that. don't do it. I don't. Yo, people, my, me really? as a, me as a man with kids and a wife, I don't understand how niggas have the time. To how do that. exactly? I don't. I cannot. Exactly. Let me just say this. I I don't make time. Let for me myself. just say this, bro. As a man who is single. For some reason, if you go long enough without sex, you find the time. Jerk off. If you're married, though, this the jerking off only right work. next to you all yeah, the time. I was gonna say, if you're married and you're not it's having sex, it's different when you're married. That's a different conversation. It's, it is a different because when pussy's different. laying next to you, you just don't want it. It's different. Why don't you want you marry that pussy? That's nah, because it's days a you don't want to fuck. There's pussy. days you don't want to fuck, though. What, you want to go fuck some new pussy? No, because it's not every day I want to fuck new pussy. It's only sometimes. And when I'm ready to fuck new pussy, I'm on the prowl. When I'm not, I'm chilling. Getting shit done. See, I'm... I'm... I'm good. Like, I like I like the same one. I don't, mind, like, I don't mind. I don't, and honestly, like, as a single man, <laughs> and honestly, as a single man, when you're single, you could probably attain to this as well too. It's not that you're entertaining multiple people. It's your options is fucking open. My options are actually very limited. I mean, <laughs> limited, but not in that. But in terms of, you can entertain whatever you want to entertain. True, but who has a, again? Who has the time? Yeah. I really, I can't. As men who like. To make time for things like that, they make the time. Because you guys are just we're just we're, we're we like we like a good chase. It's just in our genetics, in our code. Every man can attain to this. The only man who can oppose to this is a man who don't get pussy regularly. And then you know, I have this theory, right? Mm-hmm. That men are not real people. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you so know. What are, so what are women? You know, you know, I, I you know think it's men so are funny. not real people. You know, it's so funny. I have the same theory about women. No. 
<laughs> yes, okay, I do. I do too. But let me hear, no, let me no, hear no, yours. No, no, no. Let me hear yours. Though. I just okay. So I have this discussion with my best friend all the time, and she thinks it's so funny because I'm so serious. I don't feel like men are real people. Why? Okay, because why? okay, <laughs> like you can have a girl that's so in love with you, and you still find a way or find a reason to cheat, and it's like why? Because I know from a woman's perspective, when we're in love, we don't. Um, most times we don't see anybody else but you. We don't want to fuck with anybody else but you. So, like, our emotions are, like, heavily invested in you. But with a man, they'll be in love with you and they'll still cheat. And it's like, why? They don't even fucking have a reason why they did that. Like, what's the logic behind that? Yes, there was a reason. No. Yes, there is. I can men, give you the one men reason. Men are horny. No, it's not, that, not even, it's not even that. I'll give you the most simplest reason ever. What? And it probably still don't explain it. We're just men. That's not an explanation. That's why you're not real people. That. Every man yeah. get that. It's like, like, what's the logic? What like, is the logical thinking behind that, though? You know what's ironic about that? A woman asking the logic behind a man logic. <laughs> You guys don't. Yeah, I, I just don't. Think you guys I'm, have real and feelings. Be, and and don't you have no, real feelings. No, 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 no. Point. There is no feelings involved with that. Exactly. So it's there not. Is no feelings involved. I will with say that. that. I will say this right. As a man, there is no logic behind that because there is no reason behind that because you are just a man. I think that's a very like misogynistic. I'm gonna I'm and gonna, I'm not I, and I'm not saying this because I don't I don't partake in this being simple, a man, I don't partake in cheating and shit like listen, that. Listen, I'm gonna say so, something that probably blew a lot of men's spot up, especially if they're in relationships right now. Do you know when a man is the nicest and most courteous to you? When he's trying to fuck. No, when he just cheated. Oh. That's not true. The most nicest? That nigga gonna do everything to make sure you don't if get, get no type of insinuations that he just cheated. If I get if I forget something at the grocery store, I'm gonna be the nicest I've ever been. Nah, See, that's because you're a nigga that don't cheat. You're a nigga that don't cheat, so don't that's, apply to that's you. That's very stupid of y'all because we're not Men are dumb, dumb when it comes to exactly. certain shit. And that's why on the last episode we were talking about like who cheats better. I'm, no, you just need to come home and act regular it's, because now I'm like, better. why we is this nigga cheat. being so fucking nice? And now I'm suspicious. And now I'm gonna go searching. But to shit. keep it a buck, though, there is some women, <clears throat> there's some women, regardless of the man, there's some woman that makes that man don't want to cheat in no way, shape, or form. He don't even have the thought. Like, even he think about other women, he don't even want to cheat. I ain't going to lie. There's some women that have that energy to them where it's like they bring everything genuinely to what that man wants. That he don't need to search for it somewhere else, or does he naturally attract to it outside? I think that might fall on the man mm. because there's some women that do that and they still get cheated on. I know they but, bring everything to the table. No, and they but still you can bring get everything cheated to the on. table, but it's not everything for that man. Because men are ne- they're just never happy. They're never it's no, never but enough. it takes it don't take much to make us happy. I think men are the happiest people in the world. I think women are the most We're miserable not. people in the world because y'all find reasons not to be happy. Y'all find reasons to find fault in something. Y'all find reasons to argue about something. Y'all find reasons for why something's not going right. Or if something's going right for too long, y'all find reasons for why is that. Just need a little excitement. <laughs> <laughs> it, don't, it, it, it don't. See, I so, yo, it don't even make sense. It don't make sense. It don't make sense. <laughs> When you make a point, it's still make See another point. Excitement. You're wrong because you you you're too happy. <laughs> like hold on, you doing everything right? What you doing? What's wrong with you, bro? <laughs> that's not all. Oh, I, I would like say that's morning. not always the case. That is not always the case. All right. So what case. be the difference in that? When a nigga's I, doing everything right, but you still find a reason to find something wrong. What's the reason for that? It's case by case matter. <laughs> <laughs> it's a case by case matter. <laughs> I can't really speak sense. for every woman on that one. <laughs> so speak for yourself. <laughs> speak for yourself. Um, I'm not. We want to know I'm what's in Kiana's sub- mind. <laughs> <I'm not, laughs> I don't think I'm the subject matter expert on this. I haven't been in a relationship in a long time. How long you've been single? Since 2017. Sheesh. Six years. Yeah. All right, so that's weird, right? Because it's weird on my end because I've only had one adult relationship. Same. Literally one. And I've been out of it for coming on two years now. So I've been single since I was 19 until I was like 27. 
Wait, what? Yeah. You've been single f- since 19 until you were 27? Then I got into a relationship for two years. I'm 30, about to be 31. Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know that. I thought we were like the same age. No, nah, I'm a grown ass man. Okay, you're I not. Mean, you're like two years older than me. You're a grown ass woman too. Yeah. Yeah. I would, listen, you think I'm going to have some little ass girl around here knowing the shenanigans that we bring to the table? <laughs> <laughs> and we all grown. Listen, we all grown out here. We handling bills and handling yeah, life. Yeah, right? Now we the one taking care of our parents. <laughs> That is true. That's the point we at right now. The roles have fucking turned. Yeah. We are taking care of our parents now. So if you are hand, I listen, I don't care the specifics month. of your home. As long as you're doing thing, the things that you need to do for your home, mm-hmm. you're grown. I don't give a fuck. If I can come to your elders and they don't have nothing bad about what you have to do for your place, you're good, my bro. You're good. <clears throat> I just want to let people know, don't let social media and society set the standards so high to make you feel like you're failing or not doing enough. That is very true. That is a big problem. That is true. I, I struggle with that sometimes myself. That's why I go around telling people I'm a high value man. Because the more I say it, the more I tell people, the more I believe it myself. I'm not going to let nobody come walk over me like I don't know my fucking value. No. No, I'm not going to go on social media and fucking lower my value. Mm -hmm. Okay, I might do that, but I'm still valuable (laughs) on some real shit. Just because you crumpled up a dollar bill don't mean it lost its value. You know what I do? I just go on social media and think everybody's lying. Oh, yeah, facts. That's actually how I survive social media. I think everybody's lying. Yeah, everybody's lying. I don't don't know what y'all doing. You really don't know what people are going through. And it's just so crazy that y'all brought this up, right? Because I started talking to someone the other day and not like that. Um, <laughs> oh, we know. <laughs> not yet, no, we yeah, know by yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I ain't fucking around with that dating shit. <laughs> you talk to somebody. Yeah. All right. All right. Sounds yeah. nice. <laughs> okay. But um, he has like he has everything. He has money, like mo- all the money that you can fucking think of, jewelry, apartments, houses, all this shit. And he's just so sad. Like he's just like very, I was depressed almost. I would say, and I'm like. It was until like we started talking deeper and deeper, and I'm like, it's crazy to to think that like you were looking at him on the outside, you're like, damn, he has everything, like you know, he has all the nice cars. He like I'm saying, he has money galore. Everything like, society say you're supposed to have yes, as a man, he has and he it. and when you really sit down and talk to him, he's not happy because there's certain things that he he doesn't have that money can't buy. Fact. Like he's single and he he wants to find that person for him and he just feels like there's no hope because he, all these women want money and to keep it a buck but it's like also you're probably chasing the wrong it's female. not even yeah. that I would say all right, let me, there's <clears throat> girls that don't give a fuck about that I'm gonna have a transparent moment right now a moment that I actually don't talk about with a lot of fucking people <clears throat> so that's part of the thing being single right like I have a brother right here great father great husband so I hear about the ups and the downs. Mm-hmm. So I see both sides to his marriage. And every time we talk and we get real vulnerable with each other, I always, in a sense, come off like, in my perspective, like I'm jealous of his situation. Because no matter how much you hear about they argue, you still think about the fact as a person who have nobody for a while, especially if you went a long time without having somebody that genuinely care for you and not the things that you actually have, it makes you feel like, you are not worth it. Mm-hmm. It it it's and it, and I honestly, you can have everything people want if you feel like you're not worth it. You don't have the confidence to even approach people. Exactly. There's days I have to like look at myself and be like, nah, nigga, this you, this because to keep it a buck, I'm in my mental situation because I choose to. <clears throat> I don't want to chase people because I rather chase something that's gonna give me more joy because i'm not a type of person where sex gives me that much joy because me i rather a bond over a sex any day to me the bond actually makes the sex 
much that's better. That's so true. Like I tried the whole sneaky link thing. Yeah, it don't. It's cool. I, yeah, I was like, yeah, it's cool when I'm drunk. Never. Yeah. But if I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. it's cool like, when yeah, I'm drunk. This shit. But when I'm not I'd drunk, rather, yeah, I rather have like my person, like be yes. with my person, like like I want to have my vulnerable days with somebody, shit. and it's like I want to sit in silence with somebody. Yeah, I I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. It is nice to cry to somebody. Yes. And then, I got, and then I have to see you next day, so you can't really clown me on my <laughs> shit. And you can't imagine as a single who nigga. You tell, yeah, exactly. <laughs> How, who you gonna tell? Who am I gonna who cry go, to? Yeah, who you gonna cry because to? Because the person you cry to, you think you had a bond with them. They look at you different now nah, because you actually cried to them. Mm-hmm. They yeah. never had that bond with you, but now nah, you cried. You just broke down so many tears. Now they look at you completely different. They can't fuck with you no more. Mm-hmm. So it's like, all right, I gave all of me to somebody who would think was there. How do I trust anybody else after that? It fucks with you, bro. No, so I, I can get that. I can get so that. like <clears throat> me working, like I admit it, like me as a man, I don't feel like I have everything to society's standards of what a man should have, right? And I feel like when I have it, I'm gonna keep it a buck. I still won't have enough. And I, that's like him. And I, I'm like, damn, how do I, like I try my best to like speak life into him. Like, listen, but it's hard. It, it is hard because he's, it really is certain, sh- like, you know, he's talking about his mom. He's like, I got all this money and my mom is sick. She's basically dying. It's nothing. My mom died. And my mom died. So it's like the one thing that motivated me to do everything in life is not there no more. So I'm literally working for success for real to be real with no destination. I'm just working for success because I don't know what the success is going to bring for me. I don't know what it means. I just know as a man, I'm supposed to be working towards something. I know that I don't have a woman i don't have any kids i don't have and i, I get people see like he always say like wait to have kids but to keep it about without a woman or a kid a man is purposeless at an age once you reach a certain age you have no purpose who are you providing for who are you working hard for you know some you know something about I, that though i would disagree with that but as a man as a man is different I can see how yeah you as could, a man yeah, is different I can see. so it's like all right, i bring home all this money who benefits from it that you, is true. You know what sucks though, right? So some people, I see it a lot in other people's lives where they either married and they hate their fucking spouse. <clears throat> yes. So they have to be with them and then their kids are pieces of shit. So all they do is be miserable in their life. And they don't got a way out because these are the people you're attached to for the rest of your mm-hmm. life. You know what I mean? So when I say wait to have kids, they ain't wait to have kids like like um, prolong it. Yeah, prolong mm-hmm. it. Try Still to be, prioritize Be ready. It. Yeah. But yeah. just understand when you do, this is what it is. Like it's no it's no turning it back now. That's why I tell people who don't have kids, enjoy your freedom. Because say, that yeah. shit's real. And I say to wait to find the right person. Like I feel like a lot of people are doing that these days. Like they feel like they're running out of time. You know, all everyone around them is having kids, everyone around them is getting married. So they go <clears> attach <throat> themselves to the wrong person. Now you got a fucking baby mother that you fucking hate just because you're right. in a rush to have a kid just because all your friends have kids like i don't agree with that either like i just feel like timing is everything and it'll come like you know i'm 20 i don't got no kids i don't got no man but like i feel like you know it'll happen one day can, it's I, play gonna happen. can I play devil's advocate mm-hmm. yeah sure i don't know if I, I brought this up on the podcast before i don't know if i brought it up with you before but i lost a cousin at the age of 25 he died in his sleep Perfect health. The reason he died is because his heart skipped a beat and never got back on track. This is months before he graduated from college to get like his master's. This is months before he actually was about to do his wedding. He was engaged. He died in his sleep, no kids, 25. So as as much as I love to hear when people say, you got time, you got time. That is, yeah. If you know my genetics and my family history, I struggle with that. Because the fact that I'm already 30 and I have people in my family who even live to see that, I still wonder if tomorrow is still even promised. As much as I prepare for tomorrow to be promised, I still struggle on if it is promised. That is the other side to it for sure. So it's like, yeah, I get where everybody's saying you have time, you have time. But it's like, bro, I I literally had somebody in my family. He was, honestly, he was probably one of the happiest people in my family. This nigga smiled every time you seen him. When we had his funeral, I seen people come that I never met and they talked about how much they made him smile just off how happy he was. You're telling me somebody like that who took care of himself can die the way he died at the age that he did with the things that he had going on? 
and you're telling me it's time? True. Time don't mean shit, bro. But would you rather... Okay, I get that part. But my, would you... My, my, my phone. Go ahead. No. no, no. Would you me. rather rush it and be miserable though? Like just just to do it and experience it? When you're dead, yes. Cause at that point, but you, you have don't know the way be... that life is gonna go. So you go I know, and you but make a least... rush decision like that and you probably gotta live with it till you're fucking eight. Nah, but when you're dead, you're not living with it. But, but you're you... living with it for nah, eighty for I get that. But when 40, you're dead more when you're dead, all that matters is what you have left behind. When you're dead, you're dead. Yeah, it don't matter what. <laughs> no, but wanna, that's what I'm saying. Don't have hell <laughs> but when on you're, earth, but, like... but what I'm saying is, when you're dead, you're dead. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah. So nothing. The matters. only thing that matters <clears throat> is that people are saying how you don't have nothing left behind. No, the only thing that matters to the people is what matters is what you have going on or what you had. To what have matters to you, it we don't know. I'm gonna tell you this. You're dead. I'm gonna tell you this. I promise you this, everybody in my family would be happy as fuck if we seen a little Jason running around right now. Of course you would be. Of course you would be. It's something physical mm -hmm. to remind us of him. I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying, but and I know you I know you experience this too, right? But one thing I'm starting to learn about death. At least two people. Oh, yeah, because you new that to it now. Yeah, like no, you I'm not new to no, death. No, I'm not talking about a close one, get, like a close what, one. You know what I'm saying? So what I'm starting to realize is, is we really have to start stop being kind of selfish in that way of saying, you know, we would like to see this person. I would love to see so many things about my dad and certain things like oh, that. Oh, I don't say that but about my lost ones I, I know what you're I'm saying. with them all the time. Exactly. I know what you're saying. But at the same time, we don't know what they think. Because they're not here anymore to express it. So the only thing we have to go off is the energy that they bring and they leave. Yeah, right? I can I can disagree I can... to a little bit only because when you're spiritual enough, you have conversations with these people in the afterlife as well, too. So it's not just the energy no more. You're actually having distant conversations with these people. So I don't go off that all one day what they leave behind is all you have. No, I'm still communicating with my loved ones, bro. Hmm. I literally had a dream of my cousin one time coming to me telling me shit. My mom comes to me and telling me shit. When I'm at when I'm at my worst points in life, that's when they're with me. That's when they're actually telling me things. They're not telling me things of when they were alive. They're telling me about things that's happening after they passed, which means they're still watching me. When I moved into my new house, dog, everybody in this house will tell you, my grandmother or my mom or both came to this house to make sure it was safe for us to live here. And I noticed because all, everybody heard footsteps in this house. They heard sounds in this house for probably like the first month when we moved here. We heard that shit. Nobody was terrified. Nobody was scared because we know the situation we're coming from. After we started being comfortable and figuring things out as a family and we're getting here, all that subdued, it went away. They came to make sure we were good. Make sure you're in a place that's going to love you because we came from a fucked up situation when they passed. My mom and my grandmother passed in a two-week span of each other. Oh, and damn. I personally feel like my, my mom passed first, but I feel like my grandmother gave up because after my mom passed, the family kind of split more, even though she was in Jamaica. So my grandmother didn't want to be here for that no more. So she gave up fighting. Mm -hmm. So they're in this shit together. So... And then after that, our family broke the fuck up. Niggas had to move on in different places and everything. So that's why the family is the way it is right now. So I know they came and checked up on it. So I'm not having conversations with people that passed away five years ago. I'm having conversations with current events. Things that I'm going through right now. My emotions right now. On some real shit. But that's deep enough for that. I'm going to take a shot for that. Yeah, let's take a shot. Yeah. Uh, yeah, let's take a shot. I don't know if I can take another shot because I'm kind of drunk right now. It's all good. Let's Where's see. that spliff? Give me some weed. Here, here. Let's, let's, Give me let's, some let's weed. Drink something up real I need quick. to smoke. Um, Diddy, Diddy just called Young Miami Oprah. He just said Young Miami remind him of Oprah. How do you feel about that? What's your response? Because I seen how social media reacted to that. I want to hear how you react. I did see, I did see like the shade room comments on that, and I'm like, you know what? I don't want to underestimate her because she is on a little, she's on her own like you know little trail right now, and I feel like maybe he sees something in her that we don't currently. Are you like, fucking her? When you're fucking, so, 
when you're fucking somebody. Besides you see, that, I mean, I mean, true. you can't put that aside. True. Well, he fucking a lot of people though. So fuck. is he? He is. He just had a baby. Like oh, shit. he just yeah, had he a did, fucking he, he old did baby. Just have a baby, bro. Yeah, he <laughs> shit. He's fucking a lot of people, but like she is. You know, she's doing big shit. Her her um. What is that like? Her is a podcast. Yeah, the live podcast, the, yeah, the clothing, the uh, clothing, yeah, she's, branding, all that type of shit. She's really like expanding her. But Oprah, her platform. Yeah, Oprah. Oprah level. Is, though? But you, know, she has. She, but hopefully, she do you has know Oprah's history to come in the game? Do you know how Oprah got to where Oprah is? I think how did that, she get to where she is? Oprah has been doing the media game for years before she got to where Oprah was. Her interviews are some of the most legendary interviews ever. If a lot of people actually go back and watch Oprah's original interviews before she had the Oprah show, her shit was legendary. Old, she did a lot of different shit. How old is uh? How old is Young Miami? Is she in her twenties? She is the twenties. Yeah. So I, I believe I was, Oprah didn't get popular. She was in her thirties. So let's give her some time. Let's, because one thing we gotta realize is that, like Joe Budden, like this is one thing I give him his props on. Is that you know certain things don't work out for certain people? I mean, not to say that she didn't work out in the music industry because you know it did, but sometimes some people have different paths. You never know; she could be a fucking Oprah or bigger. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like no. she has time, and she I feel like be. time. Right, me, I feel like things are a lot different these days. All right, let me ask you this: mm -hmm. with social media, what's bigger than having your own channel? <laughs> Give her some time. No, no she's not. She's no, fuck, no, wait, wait, wait. No. She fucking a nigga that got his own channel. No, regard. Outside, <laughs> she's still with you. Outside of giving her time, just in general, what's bigger than having your own television station? But that's net worth kind of all thing. All right. So I'm a conspiracy theorist. Mm -hmm. From all my conspiracy research, she ain't going to get as big as Oprah if all the conspiracies are true. Why? All right, so conspiracy-wise and conspiracy speaking, I dived into this thing called the Dave Chappelle Theory. And it talked about how Oprah, um, Bill Cosby, um, Farrakhan, um, Sharpton, how they were all involved in basically Chappelle moving to Africa. In the midst of this, they talked about Chappelle one time being in his home watching TV and on his TV only, Oprah is cool enough with the people who control the frequencies for television that she was allowed to be pro broadcast to Dave Chappelle's TVs only in a commercial break talking about if you don't stop doing the Dave Chappelle show, we're going to get you. Do you know what type of power it takes to know people who control the television frequency? and do that and on top of that in that in that conspiracy theory they talked about how Dave was sleeping one time and he was being followed by some men in suits at one point and those same men in suits showed up in his bedroom while he was sleeping sedated his wife and actually came in there with Oprah and they put a pillow over him with a gun with a silencer and she said Dave if we can get to you like this imagine what else we can do for you so this is me going in my conspiracy. So me just going off conspiracies, she don't have the pull. Yo, or what, the club. Yo, when we but get she's famous, still Oprah very had. new though. She's still very new. Very it took, new. It took Oprah years to get to that so, point. So how could you still, but how, she's so, still building? Like, all right. So let me how ask old you, is Oprah? Let me ask you, like let me seventy ask you, years old. Isn't bro. that disrespectful she, oh. to the legends who put the time in? What? To say this person is the next them who haven't even put a fraction of the time in yet. It can I I can see where it could be disrespectful, but like I said, times are very different now, and I feel like things are a little bit more accelerated just because of like all the tools that we have now, like social media, like things spread like wildfire now. Like you know, she she's reaching probably a lot wider audience than people could have, you know, back in the days, like in Oprah's time. And I think that's why it's actually making it harder to reach her level because everything's already accelerated, which means the standard have to be put higher because of the acceleration of times. The work, the man work and the effort needed at the time in the 90s to be in where you're at right now is not the same 
of where you're in 2020. It's different, which means you have to set the standards much higher. I get that. I won't say that she she can't get there. I'm not saying she I, can't I, either, I but to say like that she, she is that already. What do you think about? Maybe she's just speaking. What do you think about Young Miami saying she had to get peed on? What? I'm open to giving That's... somebody a, bro, a brown showers. I mean, a golden a brown. Shower. Whoa! I don't know about the brown part yet, but golden. Yes, I would definitely give somebody a golden shower. I'm open for that. Brown is was a very crazy. Yeah, brown. I'm not there yet mentally. Brown I'm not is there. A crazy color. Well, that was a crazy mm. thing to I'm say. I'm not there yet mentally. A golden shower? Like you want to pee on somebody? Yeah, I do. Why? I don't know. Make me feel maybe <laughs> maybe makes me feel empowered. In this world, do you know what really makes you feel empowered? Oh, God. <laughs> do you really? All right. So she what says if she likes it. Let me present this scenario with you, right? Oh, if you had God. the opportunity. To grip a man nuts in your hands and squeeze and then bend to your will, would you not take advantage of that? <laughs> Is that a yes? It depends on the man. <laughs> it's it's because what? If I don't fuck, so basically, if, yes. <laughs> yeah, if I don't, you know, that's what a golden show might feel you. like. But that's what a golden you said shower. Grip his nuts and squeeze. Yeah, you right? have to grip his nuts and squeeze, and, and he him. commands to everything you say. Absolutely. Yes, you wouldn't give that up. You just get because the... I don't fucking like him. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe just because you can. Or maybe just because you can. It's like I don't want to hurt anyone, guys. Nah, but so some people like that. Man. Some people like no. It's not a matter of hurting. They want it. So if you, they want it. Boss so if so you, tender, though. if you had a man, right, people get a step though. that you've been with, right, and he said, "Listen, I have, I have, I have to share a secret with you. I have a kink that I like, <laughs> and I kind of want you to pee on me." <laughs> he wasn't, <laughs> <laughs> and you been with this man. You married to this man. <laughs> oh, if it's my husband. Yeah, yeah it's pee your on husband. Him. You peeing on him? Yeah, it's my husband. Okay. I'm not gonna let anybody else be on you. You just can't pee on any random nigga you talking to, but for your husband, my you're husband, old. yeah, because we're in this for for life. So okay. I rather I do it than you go try to find somebody else to go do it. Where do you it. draw the line? Um, shitting. I'm not gonna don't ask gonna me shit, to on, shit on you. No, <laughs> I'm not gonna shit on you. Would you pe- would you peg him? Absolutely not. I think that is <laughs> absolutely fucking not. I I think that is kind of gay. I think it's gay. <laughs> But they say men G spot are in their ass. I know, and I really hate that for y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that for y'all. That's would, a fucking would you, lie. Would you put a thumb up there? Yeah, it made no sense. No, I don't even like a thumb in my butt. You don't like not even a no, thumb. No, I don't like it. No spit. I don't like booty. No booty. I don't play? like booty games. Not at all. I think you. I think you said that. Your husband. Spit is cool, but yeah, don't, I don't like. I don't like things getting inserted a little spit into and then my cheeks moisture. together. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. What? A little spit then clap your cheeks together. That's cool. <laughs> what the fuck is he on? <laughs> what the fuck are you on? <laughs> Yo, do you know how joyous that is? <laughs> yeah, I can, I can get that. That's cool. Just don't insert nothing into my okay, booty hole. Just spit and clap the teeth together. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. Where and I get my people this? be calling me boring for that, but I don't. I don't no, 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 Okay, you ain't yeah. boring, then. Don't let these niggas. Just because I don't to... want a thumb in my butt. Nah, that, that's cool. There's other ways to have fun. Right. What well, yeah. if you just pooped? Like that's crazy, right? That's what I'm saying. I'm like. That's what yo. It's a little I don't, shit I don't still want people. Right, I'm, I'm gonna say this to keep it a buck, bro. I'm gonna keep it a buck. Maybe I'm me, and the things I'm gonna say allows you to judge me. Judge me. It's okay. I'm gonna say. But <laughs> when you're in some really good pum pum, my nigga, a lot of shit goes out the window, bro. I don't think so. <laughs> Yo, and, and better yet, when you have a great bond with the person you're fucking, a lot of shit goes out the window, Listen, bro. Listen, maybe it has not occurred in my life, but I, I felt How like... How well is your bond with your wife? I'm amazing. Trust me. It was... <laughs> I got three kids. Okay. Right? A lot of niggas who don't know how to fuck make, get bitches pregnant. And I, I didn't have three kids before this, and I I had the opportunity to get pregnant. <laughs> get pregnant. Yep. I had the opportunity to get pregnant, and I didn't before. 
That's okay. I did with this one though. I tell you that much. <laughs> Show no, your shout out to your no, wife. No second, no second thought about it. I didn't give no fucks. Is that yeah? Is that Caribbean yep, poo? It was just like that. Yep. I ain't so. gonna lie. I I really hope that's what hooks me. Caribbean yeah, yes, I, I really hope. Yeah, because I don't want to explain parts of my culture that others so, won't yeah. get. That's I don't the have... main reason why. I, I don't want to sit here and explain certain things that shouldn't be explained. Like I don't want to be in that position. And if you're in that position, at least the pump is good. Hopefully, yeah. That's all I'm gonna say. How do you feel about Halle Berry's baby father calling her nigga? What the fuck? <laughs> you didn't hear about that? No. That's a whole story. She yeah. didn't fucking know he was like this before. Oh, that. Oh. You date white men? I don't. I haven't dated a white man. Would I can't you? say I won't. Would you? Because I do be seeing some fine ass, fine ass white man. I'm like, damn. What are you, you gonna take for you to date a white man? I feel like he gotta be. He gotta. He gotta dress nice because white men do not have. Would swag you date Travis Kelsey? All. No, not with that um, okay. cop mustache that he got right now. <laughs> he has a state trooper fucking mustache right now. No, I, I don't a, like it. I got a better question for that. You would date somebody who says, "Take this cock." No, that turns me the fuck <laughs> off. That's why I can't white. I cannot watch white porn. Yeah, it's like I cannot like, watch white porn. I don't have a cock, baby. Yeah. yeah like, oh my god, this cock is so good. I, yeah. What the fuck? That turn it off. Turn it the fuck off. We about to clip that. Where's money. the rooster? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that shit turns me the fuck off. <laughs> white guy's about to pay a lot for that clip. <laughs> 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 Yep. I, we cut you in. It's the third. It's the third, third, third. <laughs> How'd that cock feel, girl? Yep. Yep. No. I can't even picture myself saying that. Yeah, get off of me. I feel like that's so demasculating. I feel like I want to say that to my wife and see what her reaction is. <laughs> I would like you to do that, and I would like you to come back and tell us. Okay, I will. Please, try I that. I want to know, too. Please. This is a social see. experiment. Yeah. I feel like, matter of fact, hold on. Like, girl, I just had some that, tequila and whiskey. You're going to take this coffee Tequila tonight. and whiskey <laughs> and the blue chew. I'm, drinking, I'm taking a blue chew tonight. And the blue chew. Is this still a cock when there's blue chew involved? That's exactly when it's a cock. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're right. Yep. You're right. Yep. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I feel like I'm probably going to go to the hospital tonight. Yo, I don't know if I would go to the hospital if my dick is too hard. If my dick is hard for four hours. You you would or you wouldn't? I would, but I probably would be take so much out of me. I'd be so scared. I would not. If my dick is hard for four hours, I'd yeah. be proud. No, that's not that's a problem. I would be scared. That's a problem. I'd, yeah. be, I'd be scared after the fifth hour. Nah, I'd be scared after the first. <laughs> True, five hours is scary. My yeah, dick is five hard. Hours is wild, but how, long, how long does that, how long is it supposed to last? Like, I've, I've, It depends. Um, I ain't going to lie. Like, I've depends. had times where on my really drunk nights, I've, even when... You've nut and had sex. I've probably still had an erection after the sex for probably at least thirty minutes. Thir- at least thirty minutes. Because it's yeah, time- that, ha- that happens. That happens. Yeah, like there's times when you even nut and everything, and the- but the erection just don't yeah, that- go away. No, that but like happens, off, off the pill though. Like how long? Is I've never that had the pill, to- so I can't complain. I would, I would- <laughs> no, it doesn't but come see, with when like that happens, I'm worried it though. Like, it don't. What? Your what? penis has a mind of its own. But when that happens, I'm worried because I'm like, yo, what the fuck is going on? Because yeah. I could just be, ch- I'll be chilling. I don't I've never been hard for four hours, so I don't know if it's a problem. Okay, but, I think, okay, you know what? I think if it gets like 24 hours, go to the hospital. Nah, six, what? nah, nah eight, <laughs> is my pro- eight is mine. If, if, you, if, if you go my dick is hard for an hour, if you go full shit, I'm going problem. to the hospital. No, my dick been hard for a whole hour before, so that's not a problem. Nah, after sex twice is crazy. I know sex is not supposed to be long, but you've been in situations where you have long sex, my nigga. Yeah, I know. But it's Hopefully not. you are blessed enough to have long sex. Are, are, we, are we still having long sex at this age? Yeah, well, you got to sometimes. sometimes. Yeah, you got to. You got Wait, to how present. long sex got to be for you? I don't know. Like, what is it for y'all? What's, it depends. Averagely? Like, on a regular night or on a good night? On a good night. On a good night? Oof. On a good night, if we start at 12, we're going to bed at 3. I think, That's no. way too long. That's I'm not saying very, we're having sex the whole very, time. Yeah, okay. uh, no, we're not no. having sex the oh, whole time. Okay, okay. This is know. rounds. But we ain't going to sleep. I'm just saying we're going to... F- Listen, it was to a point when I was in my last... Re- the only adult relationship, we had sex till like 3 in the morning. And you know what I did after that? I made tater tots. That sounds amazing. It was. And then that's we amazing. laughed after. Then we had sex again and went to bed. Okay, that's cool, but like, just that's what like, I'm saying, just like, like, just like, no, sex with me around. is an event. Nah, sex with me is an adventure. Like, 
I like to do different things during sex. I like to take that adventure all the way. Because like I told you, bonding is very big with me. So if we're having sex, because then a lot of times your dick going get, to get up right away. <clears throat> it's not going to get up right away all the time. Because sometimes the nut be so good, it's like, all right, bro, like... Give but that's what bit. I'm saying. But that's what I'm saying, right? No, I get that. It's, it's not. Nut. It's not. Yeah, the nut's at, like, all right, bro. Give me a little bit. If the nut is that good, bro, be like, and your shit bit. is still up there for another hour. No, I've been there. <laughs> I, all right. So I'm, again, I'm I told you, I, I'm at a point where ever since I turned 30, bro, it's been happy. Like I've been, it's been crazy because I've been harder and longer more than I ever needed to be, <laughs> only because <clears throat> I just be wanting more. It's like there's no such thing. At, I li- I can literally want more until I fall asleep. And I don't know how long that can be. And I'm a nigga who fights sleep. That's crazy. Yeah, at this point, I'm a, I'm a danger to myself. Yeah, you ever... Another full, trans- <laughs> another full transparency moment oh for all God. the men out there. We got a lot of transparency. When you have been... <laughs> when your dick been hard for so long and your balls just keep building up nut after nut after <laughs> nut and you don't release... Oh my god. After a while, what the fuck? you get pain in your balls. Oh, and like I don't blue want balls. that. No, oh, it's worse no, than no, blue no, balls. No, 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 no. That's a different pain. That's it's a diff- worse oh. than blue it's balls. A, it's like a pinching. Yeah, this one is worse. Like it's like the tubes in your nuts is strained. Like it's like it's a it's a it's a it's a really bad pain. Yeah, it's bad. Oh. Blue it's balls, bad. you can probably masturbate and it feels a little bit better after, but it hurts masturbating. But this type of pain, you can masturbate, it's okay, but the pain just there. Yeah. You guys have to fuck. Yes. No. Well, yeah, yeah. Or at least release. <laughs> that is crazy. Yeah, after a while, if you have a buildup of sperm and your balls get too heavy, that shit hurts. It makes your mental go crazy. And that too. We didn't get to that part yet. <laughs> Damn. But yeah, your balls hurt on some real shit. And I never started experiencing it until I really started getting older. My sex drive started increasing. So I'm like, all right, now I just got to at least masturbate a lot more now. So you're just walking around and your nuts hurt. Yeah, I yo, I want a, I want a week where my nuts just hurt. So now at a point, if my nuts start hurting, I just ice that bitch. You gotta put the nuts on ice. Yes, I gotta put the nuts on ice. This is crazy. Yeah, I never had to ice my nuts. You're not before. single. Of course you. You're yeah, not of course single. You did it. <laughs> <laughs> this is a single nigga problem. A single nigga with high value. That's the problem. We all right. Another thing I wanted to say this at the beginning of the podcast too. I've been struggling with one thing, right? I've been struggling. On if I wanted to die a whore or die pure. Die a whore. Yeah, life. why would you die pure? Well, I at mean, as a point, man. Right? Yeah, at this point, right? Why? Just go all out. Who gives a f- I think, I feel like people don't care about men's body counts as much as they care about women's. I don't care about a woman's body count. Good. You don't ask. If you can be the, you can be the, you can have 55 body counts, I'll be 56. <laughs> I don't, I, I, yeah. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> if she's 40, are you really asking her if she... Oh, well, if, if she's 40, 40 that's different. <laughs> if she's been single the whole time, if she's 40, you know what I'm saying? All, All right. right, cool. Would you fuck a porn star? Would I fuck a porn star? Mm-hmm. Or would I marry a porn star? No, we ain't get that far yet. Would you fuck a porn star? <clears throat> I'm, I'm married, so no, but if I wasn't married, no, yes. No, hypothetically. If I wasn't married, yes. yes. Okay. Would you fuck a porn star? A male porn uh, star? Absolutely. Or, or a woman porn star? Um, No. No? No. I would. I, I actually have two on my list. Uh, <laughs> uh. Oh, no. One, because the other one got a BBL and I don't like her no more. Oh. Yeah. I like natural bodies. I love natural bodies. I, I do. I prefer it. Give me all the say you like. That's good. Give me all that shit. But, see, if I admit who's on my list now, y'all gonna judge me. If y'all know who it yeah, is. Yeah, it depends on if I know. Many the Stallion. Who? Mini the Stallion. Mini the Stallion. No. Okay, I know she's a <laughs> never mind a little person. She's she's a little person. <laughs> she's short. I would say she's a little person, but she's, she's a short. Little she's a little ain't person. nobody, ain't nobody she's fucking. Not, she's not officially a little How person. How tall is she? Like I four think, foot nine. I don't think she would five. Four. I don't think she would five feet yet. Four foot eleven. Probably there. Maybe four foot twelve. <laughs> Wait, four foot twelve? What the fuck? <laughs> He just made up his own shit. <laughs> she, she had to process it. And the tequila started to hit. Like, what? That's how I said I couldn't drink no more. <laughs> I'm still drinking. I got a meeting in the 8 a.m. <laughs> All right, wait. 
before we close out, let me hit a little bit more before we go on, because I kind of want to touch on this, because um, I, I fucking love DC Young Fly, so I want to bring this up. So um, Jackie was, Jackie O's surgeon um, actually gets no criminal charges for her death. Her, her death was ruled in an accident. I would say, I don't, I mean, she did die, like, after surgery. She didn't die during yeah. surgery. She I died, read the like, article a couple more. days it was after. after. She was doing pills and there's medication that she was yeah, on so after the surgery. And then she had a headache. And then the doctor told her, stop taking one and alternatively take another one. And then eventually she passed away. Yeah, I don't really feel like that's on him, per se. Because, you know, it could have been, like, a... a a plethora of things that that Thanks. happened like you know it could have been she had certain health problems or you know whatever the medication she was taking just wasn't working with her and it's just it's a lot of things but like if she was to die during the surgery i feel like then it would absolutely be on his hands. On hands it would definitely be on his hands um i will say though i do not like how he handled that whole thing like after she passed away he kind of just like Instead of, like, showing any type of empathy towards her and her family and what happened, he kind of just tried to clear his name more so and and just defend himself. And it's like... At that point, he was only more focused on him. He was only more focused on him. And, <clears throat> it, and it seemed like... It was, like, a very heartless thing to do. Like, she just fucking passed away. Like, the most you can do is, you know, show some type of, like, empathy Sympathy, toward, yeah. Yeah, towards her her and her family. Yeah, like, he was just so worried about clearing your name and, and making a statement for social media just to make everyone know, like, you had nothing to do with this. Like, but social media are him. the jury. They are. But you know what? We will look at him more. I, I guess we'll look at him in a better light if he tried to be more empathetic. But would you look at him in a freer light? In a what? Freer. More free He, light. I don't think... <clears throat> I would in this in her situation, yes, because like I said, she didn't pass away during the surgery. She passed away days after, so that could have been you know it could have been a lot of things involved in you know why she passed away. Right. But for him to to just completely bypass that whole thing and like just shut off any emotions towards that whole thing and just try to clear his name was just like is disgusting thing to me. The approach, yeah, the approach was bad. I hated it. <clears throat> I just mad that DC lost one of his peoples, man. Yeah, that was I was very sad actually. I love DC as a fucking com- comedian, <clears throat> as an actor. I love DC as a fucking personality. On mm-hmm. Yeah, I watched his come up. I've watched him since Vine days. Yes, I've watched <laughs> I him like that whole thing. Yeah. I love DC, man. So I just it's sad that you have to go through that, but at least you're prepared to go through that. He handled it very and well. and still handling he, it. Yeah, and it's still very handling well. it very well. I must shit. say, he he's mm-hmm. like he's so strong. Honestly, like to just keep pushing forward after something like that, like you know, keep working. I feel like if I took a big loss like that, y'all probably wouldn't see me for months, maybe years. <laughs> like a big, I wouldn't loss even be like me that. no more. Exactly. I wouldn't be me, but to yeah, still like be, be him and you know, still keep laughing and joking and be so lighthearted. He was so lighthearted at her funeral. Like I'm like, damn, that is strength. Like I've seen parents do shit like that, and I'm just like, that is a lot of strength mm-hmm. because I would be. Broken. I'll be broken. I'll be completely oh, shattered. I'll tell you this. I tried to talk my dad's funeral. It did not work at all. You know what's funny, right? It didn't work at all. See, y'all making me get vulnerable again. But at my mom's and my grandmother's funeral, I actually felt I had no option of being vulnerable. For one reason particularly. I grew up around women. So <clears throat> a lot of the women around me that I was close to were already in this vulnerable state. That I didn't know how to handle mentally. So I felt like I had to be strong for them. Because the minute they broke down, I had to catch them. Literally and figure, figure, and, and physically. So I feel like at the time of the funerals, I had no option or choice to be vulnerable. I can completely understand that. Mm-hmm. I have a, a best friend who, you know, he lost his dad. And it's the same for him. Like, everyone looked at him now like, you know... Now you're the man of the family. Yep. So he he doesn't he didn't really get a chance to really like mourn. To mourn and to grieve mm-hmm. and to just be vulnerable and, and be sad, like because he had to be strong for everybody else. And I'm like, I hate that. Like Oh, he I cries at the times so nobody yeah, knows. Yeah, I he hate knows. that. He and he goes through things and he does certain things where it's just like, you know, that's just not him. Just because he's just Oh, it's him now. 
Yo, as much as you don't want to admit it, it's, as if you don't make the change for it when you recognize it, it's you now. Because you nothing. Could, no, I'm not saying. No, nah, you could only change crazy, so much about you but, when you're 30, bro. I, I don't yeah. care. You're, like, there's certain things that's just it just sticks to you quicker than you need to than if you were younger. Because you know you're still growing. At this point, we're grown. So certain things just becomes part of you quicker than you really want it to. And before you know it, it's affecting your actions. It's affecting how you have relationships with people. Like, as much as I don't want to affect all those bad things happen to me, like, I struggle with being able to be with a woman because I don't see anything long term with any woman. I was taken away from the most important woman in my life. So I don't see anything long term with a woman. So you have to, in my eyes, you have to do a lot to prove to me that you're long term you know so i know that it affects me because it's like as much as i don't want to admit it like yeah i expect every woman to leave me at some point just because i was forcibly separated from the ones i did love mm-hmm. that's the reality of it yeah as much as they don't want to admit it it's, it's how i am that's honestly how i've been in a long time i just tried to make the change but eventually mm-hmm. you have these some conscious thoughts so it's like all right, bro, this is the only thing that gives me mental sanity. Yeah. And it kind of goes back to the the story I was telling you guys about earlier. Like, yeah. The guy that I was talking about, I'm like, he was saying stuff, too, that's just like, you know, basically, like, he feels like he can't have everything, like, because he got all the money and the success that he can't find love. Like, he will never find love, yep. and it'll never happen. And I'm just like, I'm actually at that safe. point. I'm you at can't... that point. See, and I hate and I hated that, because I'm like... But I have so much... L- we are the people that have the most love to give because it, it sounds yeah it sounds like but it. the thing is we can't give it until people allow us to get past our vulnerabilities to love you the way we need to because at that point we're so fucked up that we can't love you properly off the jump we can't and if you can't recognize that you're gonna leave us and break us more so it's hard for us to even want to give ourselves to somebody because it just leaves us broken more on some real shit i of course i want to be shooting my shot and trying a lot of shit but it's like yeah you try this shit and you give your all but a lot of people laugh at you clown you or you don't feel like you get a return for what you invested in any way type of shape it's like i can't continue doing this you lose pieces of you after a while it's tough Mm-hmm. that shit tough yo it's tough being a man yo I know it's tough being a woman with all this shit going on but with like the things that we have to deal with too it's tough it's really tough and it's things that I keep it a buck yo I'm proud of the men that don't commit suicide <clears throat> I'm super proud of y'all as a man who had those thoughts I'm proud of y'all niggas yo it takes a different type of nigga to know what we lack what we got and still push forward. Shout out to everybody that don't commit suicide. No, seriously. Like, Real shit. It's <clears throat> tough, money. It is very tough. And I feel like everyone is, is battling something now. So so I'm like, just be kind, guys. Just everyone just be kind. At least. You look like you wanted to say something? Nah, because you said the right word. It okay. ain't nice. It ain't so nice. Like, <laughs> It ain't nice. And I know you be like, oh, I ain't shit and da 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 da. Nah, but like, I know I ain't shit, but I'm kind. Just be kind. Yeah. I'm kind. Like, just be kind. I'm never going to be the one to push you to that. I ain't going to lie. I gave a homeless man five hours the other day. <laughs> I'm kind of mad I did that. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I what? Yeah, I need to buy papers too. So I had to break a Yo, ten. So I had to break a ten. I had to you break do a ten. Something I'm like, good fuck. that you don't have enough money or cash on you for papers or grab it as a smoker. Nah, yeah, yeah. I but had, that's I, that's a luxury to you. What is that? I had that to break a ten no. after that, and now that, that ten is gone. That's a luxury to you. Don't need now to that 10 smoke. Is gone. Yes, we do. No, you don't. Yes, we do. I know. I yes, don't do. smoke. See, so I, that's I. I'm, maybe it's because I don't smoke. So I feel like okay, you don't need to wake up. It's not a need. It's not you. It's something that you could live. It's something that's like saying you don't need to wake up. It's not the same. It's, it's, you weren't born with a spliff in your mouth. How you but know that? The chances you of him. You were not born with a spliff. I was born one. The chances well, of him born going to go connected by, to my um, my belly button. Mm. The chances of him going to go buy <laughs> actual food or save that for an apartment slim. He's probably gonna. Go I was buy gonna drugs. use it the same shit for Matter drugs fact, anyway. So I'm about to go buy my exactly. own drugs. You can afford. You can't. But that's what, see. That's he can afford my if whole he saved thing. all his fucking no, cans. No, no, no. That's my whole thing. Look at it this way, right? Look at this way, right? That man is homeless, which means he has the time to sit in that same spot for at least 10 hours. So I got to go back home many, to my kids. Imagine how many people we asked for $5 within that 10 hours. 
And how many people gave him five dollars in that ten hours? You think it was just him? No, but imagine how many people think like you know you or him. That's like you know I'm not gonna give this to him. He's probably gonna buy drugs with it. But I'm gonna give her. I rather just give you drugs. That's what I think. Use most of the time. I rather just give you drugs. I rather give you drugs. Don't 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 think that I ain't got no drugs. It's either buy you food or give you drugs, bro. After I give you that money, that it's up to you to do what you want to do with that because. At the end of the day, everybody has their own vices. So if his is either alcohol or drugs, so be it. He's living a very fucking tough life that we probably couldn't, we can't relate to. Like, we got a roof over our head. We got a car. We got this. We got jobs. We got that. So who cares if he takes that one $5 to, to you know, go buy something to help him get through the fucking tough-ass life that he's fucking living right now? Like, it's hard out here. That's why I buy them food so they can do more drugs. Do you think I want them to do what? drugs? Do you think I want somebody to do drugs on an empty belly? I would love... What the fuck? <laughs> I drink and smoke on an empty belly all the time, and I know the toll it takes on I me. I would hope that they're not doing drugs. They are doing drugs on are, an empty belly. I'm not going to judge. I'm not going to judge. No, I'm care for you but enough. But, yeah, no, I would, I would absolutely... If if you want the food, if you actually want the food, I have no problem buying the food. I'm not going back. They to don't buy want food. the food. They you, just want you. You're not gonna buy them the food. I gave this I homeless buy food. I, I don't give his, money. I buy food. I gave I this lady both. a homeless lady a whole box of motherfucking these these fucking nutrition bars, <laughs> and she looked at me crazy. And she's like, oh. she want that? Exactly. She wanted money to buy drugs. That's well, what's why wrong with that? the last homeless person I caught, he was digging it in a trash can. I gave him all my candy and I felt like that wasn't enough. I took him to McDonald's and I gave him my last five dollars to buy food just so he can do more drugs later because I knew he's still going to do drugs. I don't want him to do drugs on an empty belly because it kills you quicker. It do. I don't know about all that. but no, If you drink sometimes. enough with no food in your belly, it fucks with you. Imagine doing coke or crack with no food in your belly. I don't know what none of that's like. Yeah, that's crazy. That's what I said give the money. <laughs> Just give them the money and, and go watch your business. All right, fine. I give them a dollar. A dollar? Okay, whatever you give them. Make the drugs. Mad. I was just mad <laughs> I had to bring a drugs. $10 bill. Nah, you ain't getting a 10. Fuck that. Why did I have to bring a $10 bill? Because I gave him $5. I could have used the $5 to give me some a water or something and spent the whole five. Now I had to break a 10. Cause I gave him five dollars. I should have gave him all the change. One time I pulled over and gave this nigga mad change. I was there for mad long. The whole time the red light was going, I was there giving him change out of my car. You should have like, oh, gave hold him on. the ten dollars. Nah, <laughs> I'm fucking with you. No. <laughs> Before we go, I want you, based off you being in CT or just being in the spotlight with everything going on, if you can highlight. One creative or one entrepreneur or one artist just doing their thing. What's one artist you would are creative you would highlight? I think just because I've been working with him very closely in the past few weeks, I would say Don C O P. And um YTH Fest is tomorrow, October eighth. Oh, it's probably gonna happen after this episode. Yeah. Came out. <laughs> well, you know, he has so that's another thing. He has, you know, the YTH face, YTH face oh, fest. Yeah. Tequila kick it in. <laughs> God, the tequila is tequila. Welcome to the family. Um, he has Welcome a YTH the fest. <laughs> right. The YTH fest that he puts on. Um, I, I think it's annually, or I don't know nah, how frequently. He puts on like two or three. Years. Okay, yeah. So yeah, so you know, however frequently he puts it on. But you know, I think that's a major thing for Connecticut, like to um put a whole fest together where you have a bunch of artists from you know Connecticut, Massachusetts, Mass, and, you know, the other New surrounding England area. states. Yeah, the New England area. Um. Coming to showcase their talent is an amazing thing to do and a great way to give back. So I would definitely highlight him because he's been doing his thing and he was mm -hmm. just at the um, the BT Hip Hop Awards yes, in Atlanta. Was. So that was a major thing for him. So Don ZOP, I would say for sure. Okay. So this week is Don ZOP for the creative of the week coming straight from Kiana's Corner. Period. I'm hot and, and I'm drunk. And if you want to be highlighted, Blue make time. sure y'all see, make sure y'all be seen by Kiana because it's not up to us <laughs> to highlight you. It's up to her. And we're not going to give no input. So make sure y'all tap in with her and everything that she has going on. Make sure y'all in front of her face on social media so she can see that y'all motherfucking working because y'all don't get shouted out if y'all not working. <laughs> That's a fact.
That's a fact. That's a motherfucking fact. Don P is working. Mm-hmm. That motherfucker is working. And we know mm-hmm. that. I have my own personal stories with him too, so I don't disagree with you in any way, shape, or form. I fuck with Don P with what he's doing and what he's bringing mm-hmm. out here. So, And I just love the fact that he's on the path that he's on for him regardless. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Shit. yeah. I feel like he has right. his own sound. Yes. Not something that's that. That's why I say he's on his own path Definitely. for him. Mm-hmm. And I love that for him. Regardless of all the people we have on here, everybody have their own path, and Don ZOP is one of those as well too. So shout out for you for being the first Kiana's Corner pick of the week. <laughs> Any closing words from anybody? Uh, no. <laughs> I was gonna say have kids at eighteen. I was say, oh God. Nah, yeah, should yeah. By the time this whole shit is done, when y'all realize how crazy being single is, y'all gonna do that anyway. <laughs> Being married is crazy too. <laughs> <laughs>